So in the previous video I, I was playing with this mock data, now let's play with real data. I'm going to use some data sets included in the library FPP2. In particular let's play with this Australian consumption of beer, auto plot, house beer. Okay, so here's the time series that I discussed in the theory videos. And let's now do some slicing. So let's let's subsetting or slicing is the word you prefer to play with parts of the data. So let's repeat this command. And, I'm, and if you take a look at this, this is uh, this is in years. So so it starts in 1950 something and ends in 2020 and 2010. So I'm going to take only a window. So a window starting let's say at 1970 and you can see here that now our plot is starting here we can also say that we are ending at 1970 and only we would take into account the first part of the series we could also combine them so we could say end at 2008 and start uh, let's say 1980 1973, the greatest years in history. Okay, so you, you can see that this is really simple. If you take a look at the data, you can see that this is a structure in years, uh, and every year is structure in quarter. So probably when this data, data set was created with a function ts, you have the frequency equals 4. Okay. Now, if you want to struct not just for years by structing elements, like for instance the first six elements, so you cannot split this year in two with the function window, so you have to use the function subset. So let's take a subset of house beer starting at element one and let's say let's take seven first elements, okay? And here we go, the seven first elements, and actually you can use head and tails as with any other data frame. These are this, the last six elements. Look at this, it's 2020, uh, 2010, sorry. And the first six elements would be something like house beer. Okay, here we go. Okay, going back to forecasting, remember, let's do an another plot again of house beer. I'm going to use as naive because this data is strongly seasonal. And here we go, you can see the prediction. And you can see these oscillations there. Okay, well, how good is this approximation? So are we doing good? Are we doing well? And if you remember, these confidence intervals, these predictive intervals are estimated using the residuals of the fit. So how good is our fit? So let's plug this, let's call this naive or as naive fit. And let's do this function again. Let's copy. Okay, so let's take a look at this summary of the fit. And here we go. So it's telling us uh, this 80% this predictive interval and the 95% predictive interval. We also have information about the root mean square error, the maximum uh, amplitude error, and so on and so forth. So we could use different models in order to compare this. And also the standard deviation of the residual. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the residuals. So let's use GG histogram to plot as naive fit residuals. And you can see that this is not normal, but this is pretty good. So actually it's pretty symmetric. There is some skewness because uh, if you see this point here, there are more data set at this, uh, this side than on the other side. We can just plot the, the data set of the residuals. How to plot is naive fit residuals. And you can see that this is pretty noisy, but you don't see any structure there. Probably this peak here is related to this uh, original plot. Let's go back to the original one. You can see that you have a, a, a change in the trend here. So it was growing until it reached a, a kind of plateau and then it started decreasing. If you go back to the residuals, take a look at this. These are occurring around 1973 or so. And you can see this peak here. And then this 1980, probably, uh, let me look at this. Yeah, probably it's related to this peak. I don't know. But you can see that in, in principle it's pretty noisy. Later in the course, we're going to discuss uh, what is going on about residuals, but now we can use this function called, called GASFCA, which is our autocorrelation function. Uh, let's plug here the residuals, as naive fit residuals, and here we go. So anything that is above these blue lines is considered that it's not a very good 
property of the noise. Remember that one property of the residuals is that they have to be uncorrelated, and this means that they are strongly correlated and unbiased. And I would I wouldn't say anything about bias because we will have to check that. But uh, still, you can see that the mean value is not very well captured. So probably there are a lot of values above the mean here and some values below the mean there. Okay, so this model is not capturing pretty well the whole trend, the whole data set. We can also use a very lovely function called gg, uh, sorry, check residuals, is naive dot fit, and here we, here we have a summary of all the information. So we have the plot of the residuals, this kind of histogram with an uh, overimposed normal, so you can see how good this is. And, and as I was saying, there is some skew in the data, so this is not fitting very well in this side. You have this outlier there, and of course you have a strong correlation there. Let's try to repeat this for other models. So let's use, for instance, random walk forecast of Ausbeer. This is going to be really bad in, in, in general. And a couple of things here. The histogram is really bad. This is strongly seasonal, and this is because the random walk prediction is not capturing well what is going on there. And this is going to be a signature of periodic seasonality. So whenever we have this sort of pattern in which we have correlations, and I would explain this more thoroughly in another video, but whenever you have this sort of re repeated correlation, this means that the model is not capturing seasonality. So this is pretty good. Finally, we can take a look at the residuals in, in, in a way that we did before when we were talking about regression. So we use this function gqqnorm, which is comparing uh, the residuals with a normal distribution, the quantiles for normal distribution. And this would be a straight line. Okay, and it's pretty much a straight line. So you can see here that there are some outliers there. This is related to, let's plot this again. This is related to this part of the graph and maybe to this part of the graph. But overall, this is performing uh, pretty nicely.